Greetings YouTube, it is Soul Cat again. I think I'm gonna call this part two of um you know like vocabulary or licks or fills to put over worship music. Uh, what I was just playing was Here I Am to Worship. Every church sings it a little different, but I think a lot of churches sing it, so I did a cover over it. Um I'm gonna try to break down some things that you can put in your playing that may be helpful, uh, and that you may be able that you can add today. Not just for this song, but for any other song of this type that you need to add. So, again, I'm detuned. I'm in C sharp again just to try to keep it easy, but all of this stuff converts to any um, key. So, I don't remember everything I just did, unfortunately. So, I'll try to go for the more prominent things that I did that have probably stood out to you that you want to know. Um, here I am to show. One, okay, the progression one, seven, six, five, four, three, four, back to the one, you can go back to the seven, I'll talk about that in a second, all together, six, same thing again, five, four, three, two, me. And then obviously go, I never know how much it costs. We're not going to do that right now. I'll just do the first part, right? So the first thing I want to point out is, um, you heard I said you can use a seven. Uh, one, seven, six. One thing you should know as a bass player is five and seven can be interchangeable. You can substitute one over the other. Um, and it still sounds pretty good either way. Uh, just know that your MD or a keyboardist, organist, you can run the risk of them yelling at you for subbing if they don't trust you enough to play what you need to play, um, and they think that you're incorrect, uh, and they don't understand that you're just you're you're purposefully substituting a different note to give a different sound. Um, but I'll let you hear how they both sound. Here I am to worship. Yeah, with the seven and some. Here I am to bow. Here I am to sing. Here I am. Again, with a five this time. Here I am to worship. Here I am to five. Here I am to say that you're mine. All right, so I'm back to the six. And the five is a little bit more powerful. Um, gives a, a little different sound, but it allows you to do different things. Like one thing you probably heard me do was I did a walk up from the five to the six. Um, Scott from Scott's bass lesson would call that a sexy note right there, but um, that's a five sharp five or flat six six. All right, and just so you know where that was in the song, um, all together. Now, the other thing you'll probably want to know, and you're probably like, shut up and just do what you what you did, uh, was. Uh, Alright, I did that over the one. Um, again, this stuff can be used anywhere in any song. I'm giving you guys a lot of my good tricks here. But I remember how frustrating it was being a beginner bass player. Uh, I'm not saying at all that I've arrived because I haven't. I would still put myself at a low intermediate. Um, but I know a few little tricks to make things sound good and make it sound like I'm, I can present as being better than I actually am. Uh, just based on a number of licks I've stolen from a number of different people um, and learned how to place them because I studied music theory. Uh, I am a gospel bass player. I do play in church. I do not read sheet music. I do not read notes. I do play by ear, but I know theory and you should too. Uh, yes, you can play without knowing theory, obviously, but when you understand theory, your musical ability, like, just, there's no stopping. All right, so let me get off my soapbox real quick. Um, but you'll learn things quicker. You'll understand where to place things better if you learn music theory. All right, so basically what that was was, all right, off that one there. Um, here I am. All right, so let's say with that, that's where we are. The C sharp, which is the home note. I went to the five, eight, eight is the higher one, the octave, five, eight, five, eight, I guess you would call it nine, ten in this case, or the higher two, higher three, 
Cap that off. I went to the one. That's all that is. It's a um, it's a higher one. All right, because that right there is a one. And when you go over and up two more octaves, that's a one. All right. It's a good lick to use to fill in, give some color. Uh, also to put at the end of a song. All right. So just so we can get where that is. All together, wonder for to me. I'll do it at the beginning of the phrase. Here I am to worship and to bow down when, um, I've forgotten the words now, but the tune is the same. Alright, um, I don't know if there's anything else I did, I don't know. I did something like that over the four. Uh, all together. Uh, wonder for two. Alright, all that was was I did that over the four. This lick can actually be done over the four and the one. Uh, just that part right there, and even the five. And all it is is a. Uh, Let's do it from the one, okay? Just because it's going to be easier to explain. So if we're in the one, we're in the C sharp. It's a seven, hammer on into the eight, pull back off into the seven. To the five, two. Ba -da -da -ba -ba. Ba -da -da -ba -ba. All right. And that's, that's the basic shape of it. So when we take that back to the four, that same shape, and then I knew I had to go back to the one. So I'm at the end of the phrase going back to the one. I did two, one. So, uh, on again, one, four, two, three. Back to the one. So um, I think something else I did was all right. And remember, I told you in the last video, um, know your major scale. That's just really your major scale: six, seven, one, two, three, um, four. Back down to three, two, one, seven, six kept going down to the five and instead of using that passing note three I'm using that five there to get to the four. Alright. Alright, and you can you can phrase it any way you want. Articulate, um, triple it it, you know, make it faster, make it slower. Just make sure it's in time when you get there to land on the four. Alright, and a lot of this stuff is just using your major scale, using your minor scales, using your minor pentatonic, major pentatonic, um, and just cutting them up, like uh, making them musical in a way that can fit. That's all it is. And that's all a lot of bass players are doing when they play slower songs, uh, just so they don't get stuck playing on roots. They're filling stuff in with color by knowing what's going to what. They're just using things to bridge to other things, using a lot of passing tones. Um, maybe not starting their licks at the one of something. Uh, maybe taking what they were doing from that root, going up a little bit, coming back down, uh, change where it's placed on the bass, because even though there's a four here, there's a four here, it may sound different for that particular lick here than it does there, and bring it to life more. All right, so good luck with that stuff, guys. Um, I hope this helps. Uh, that also, just before I leave, that lick I did, you can do that over a four, you can also do that over a five, because they're all major um, notes, and I know that because I studied music theory. Just had to throw that in there. This is um, Soul Cat, signing off. I uh, hope this helped. God bless you.
keep on playing bass. Have any questions, comments, concerns, things you want to learn, songs you want to hear, let me know. Like, leave a comment, subscribe.